This is a quick tutorial video instructing in enabling UEFI and Secure Boot for a system that has a BIOS which supports these technologies. For a Windows 10 TH2 64 bit installation, it's recommended to enable UEFI, to enable Secure Boot, and to disable Load Legacy ROMs. The Windows 10 installation media has to be set up for GPT. So, what is BIOS, well, it's the basic input-output system. In other words, it is the firmware of your motherboard. The BIOS setup allows you to enable or disable some of the hardware settings of your system, and it allows you to boot from installation media which contains a proper operating system. So what is UEFI? This is Unified Extensive Firmware Interface. This is essentially an advanced version of BIOS, which has increased functionality and additional security. Due to the fact that people are more familiar with the term BIOS, instead of just calling it UEFI, it's generally referred to as a UEFI BIOS, or some people just call it BIOS still. To distinguish between the two, I'll use UEFI BIOS for a new BIOS with UEFI support, and I'll use legacy BIOS for an old BIOS without UEFI support. One of the advantages of a UEFI BIOS is the globally unique identifier partition table, known as GPT. This supports 128 partitions and greater than two terabyte drives. Moreover, in a GPT partition table, the boot record is stored as a primary and a secondary boot record in two separate partitions. This has an advantage because if the primary boot record gets corrupted, it can be readily repaired using the secondary boot record. In other words, this partition scheme supports larger drives and is more robust. One other major advantage of a modern UEFI BIOS is that it supports Secure Boot. Secure Boot is a firmware-based security technology which only allows verified code by Microsoft to boot. In other words, recognized code such as Windows 10 passes Secure Boot, while unrecognized code such as the two nasties indicated will be rejected by Secure Boot. This allows the Windows 10 operating system to load alongside its inbuilt security, and this can prevent the nasties from hijacking the operating system as shown in the lower schematic. Secure Boot, however, is sadly widely misunderstood. The Linux enthusiasts thought it was a Microsoft-based technology to lock out Linux installations. Microsoft have worked with the Linux community to allow Ubuntu, Mint and Fedora, for instance, all to pass Secure Boot. Microsoft have also worked together with the vendors of some popular utilities such as Acronis TrueImage and Mercurium Reflect, and these utilities will now also pass Secure Boot. One of the biggest problems, however, is that Microsoft never released Windows 7 with Service Pack 2. This means that Windows 7 did not incorporate USB 3 functionality, and it also did not incorporate the Microsoft code to allow it to pass Secure Boot. In my opinion, Microsoft should have made Windows 7 with Service Pack 2 installation media with these technologies and Secure Boot would have been far better understood and enabled by most end users. The last problem with Secure Boot is the fact that it rejects most optical drives, therefore USB installation media has to be made, which is why a Windows 7 Service Pack 2 installation ISO should have been made available for download. It wasn't, however, and let's look forward to Windows 10 TH2 and onwards. I'll instruct in making the bootable USB correctly later on. 
So the first thing we want to do is to enter the buy setup. To enter the Dell UEFI buy setup, power down your Dell, ensure that it's shut down and not on standby. Then power up your Dell and press F2 immediately to enter the UEFI BIOS setup. The Dell BIOS splash screen where you can press F2 to enter the UEFI BIOS setup will only show very, very briefly. If you haven't pressed F2 fast enough, then you'll boot straight into Windows like I just demonstrated. If you've done this, then you'll need to go to shut down as I just did and give your system 10 seconds to shut down. So now I've just powered up my system and now you see the Dell UEFI BIOS splash screen and you can see the options to press F2 to get to the UEFI BIOS setup or you can press F12 to get to the one-time option to boot from a different device. So I pressed F2 and I'm in the UEFI by setup. And I'm just changing the settings quickly to what they would be like if UEFI was disabled and if secure boot was disabled. So the first thing you'll need to do is scroll to the right till you get to boot. And then you'll need to go down till you get to the boot list option. And you'll need to press enter and change legacy to UEFI. Next, you'll need to go to load legacy option ROM and disable it. And then finally, you can go to secure boot and you can enable it. In order to boot to Windows 10 TH2 installation media in a UEFI BIOS, with secure boot enabled. The bootable USB needs to be made with Rufus. I've downloaded the ISO and I've downloaded Rufus. I've launched it, I've accepted the user account control prompt and I've selected the USB and I've selected the ISO. The important two settings are the partition scheme and the target system type. This has to be GPT partition scheme for UEFI and the file system has to be FAT32. If neither of these settings are selected, then your bootable USB will be rejected by Secure Boot and you'll be unable to install Windows 10 TH2. If you're going through this tutorial video and you've not made the bootable USB before changing the BIOS settings, is recommended just to look at the BIOS setup to see if you can enable UEFI and to see if you can enable Secure Boot. If you can, then exit the BIOS setup without saving changes. To do this, press Escape to exit any submenu and then press Escape when you're in one of the main menus and then you'll be Ask, do you want to exit the BIOS setup without saving changes? Select yes and you'll exit the BIOS setup and this will allow you to make your bootable USB. In my case, I've already made a bootable USB. So instead of pressing escape to exit the BIOS setup without saving the changes, I'll press F10. And when I'm asked, whether I want to exit the BIOS setup saving my changes, I'll select yes.